the next example that I want to bring is actually how to control Winamp, and that is uh, I'm bringing this uh, this uh, example not only because it's in the manual, so you can go ahead and take a look at it, so you, you can get more information, but also because um, <laughs> I found it fun to 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 discover how to use it. So the first thing I'm gonna just simply type out the message numbers, but later on the last part of this video is gonna be how you can. Uh, no, that is not going to be the last part. But anyways, I'm going to show you how you can get those messages manually. First of all, you have Google in there. You can just simply say Winamp messages. And by the way, you get very good information on that. But sometimes it is not that simple. Some programs are not that open about how they work. The, so, you know, sometimes you have to do the manual labor. I'm going to show you one example of how to do that. So let's continue with the send message. And this time I'm going to be sending the 0x111 message. That message, if you go ahead onto the AMSDN page, you will see that it is WM command. And that is actually a, a kind of like a standard command and that a lot of programs understand. And another standard command that you might want to take a look at is WM user. And that is uh, those two guys, I'm, I'm going to give you an example of WM user later on. At the moment, WM command is the one that I'm going to be sending, and the value is 0x111. So, for that, um, uh, let me open Winamp real quick. And just as a side note, as you can see, um, Winamp, when I uh, minimize it, at the moment, in my case, you do not have anything in the taskbar. So that means that the window is completely hidden. And that is a note that I want to make. If you want to message a window that is completely hidden, you have to do this little trick in here. Detect hidden windows. Sorry. Windows on. The reason for this is because Outer Hotkey does not detect the hidden windows by default. So you have to manually turn them on. And if you do not turn this on, and it, it, it doesn't matter if you put the correct title or anything, the message will not arrive. So uh, keep that in mind when you are messaging Windows. If it is completely hidden, and by hidden I mean that it is not even in the taskbar. Because uh, this, for example, this Firefox window is uh, minimized, not hidden. Which is kind of like a little different. Now. In, I c in my case, I'm going to be sending two messages in here. I'm going to be sending 400 and what was it? 45, I think, and 447. These two messages, each of them do something specific. You're going to be sending a play action and a stop action, respectively. So I'm sending the WM command message with an option. I'm going to be putting the first option here. So that is on the W param. The L param, I do not need it. I'm going to leave it blank. I do not need the control name because I'm not sending the message to a control. But I do want to send the message to the window, the Winamp window. Now, here's the little problem. The Winamp window, as you can see, if I put the cursor on top of it, um, that, that uh, pop-up that you see in there is the window title. Uh, I know it because I have been experiencing, uh, experimenting with it, and I figured out, yeah, that pop-up shows you the message window. But the problem is that whenever you actually um, play a song, the title of the window changes to the name of that song, and that is really annoying. Actually, that means that there is no way to send a message to that window using the window title because it's going to change constantly, and you probably will not know what the next title is going to be. So to solve that problem, what you can do is that you can use the HK class keyword to use the class of the window. As I would say it the other way around, the cl window class. Okay. Now, um, in our case, I already researched, I already know how to get this. The, in this case, it's Winamp version 1.x, which is the window class that they have been using for a little while. All the it doesn't matter which version of Winamp you're using, that's the window class um, until they change it. <laughs> but at the, m at the moment it has been like that for all the versions that they have. And that makes it um, okay for me to send this message, the WM command, with this particular option, 445, no, that would be 40,000, 
445 but again I like reading it like this 445 and um, which tells when I'm please play the song and 47 would say please stop it and let's try it so just just for the sake of it there you go <laughs> so now my script completely um, interacts with Winamp. I can do many other stuff, actually uh, very cool stuff. Uh, again, I'm gonna show you how to get that manually, but after <laughs> after I spent my time, you know, researching and stuff, then I decided, let me go to Google and see what happens. And this is what happens. When you put Winamp uh, messages, you get a link like this, which, obviously enough, if you go down, it's uh, this is the index. You see that the 2.2 is using the wm command messages, and they have already done all the job that I unknowingly did again. <laughs> so they already had a list of all the things that you can do with Winamp. Um, that is just with the wm command. You can use another command, as I mentioned before, the wm user. And we're gonna see that one later on, but yeah so if you want to hit the previous the previous track then you send the 44 if you want the next track then 48 and so on and there are many things that this thing actually understands that means that your script has a lot of power you can actually do whatever you want with Winamp just by sending those messages now <laughs> again this is uh, this might solve a lot of issues uh, in a lot of situations, but I also want to enter into the next uh, idea of receiving messages from the program that you're carrying um, by sending the WM user command in this case. So for Winamp, if you do the 0x400, which is the WM user right message, then you can send something like 0105, I think it is. I think it's 105. Let me see. 104, 105. There you go. So the 105 is uh, the message that I'm going to be sending now. Is again to the HK class Winamp. Now, <coughs> that is the W param, right? Now, the L param accepts two options, which is what they explained in here. If data is 0, it returns the position in milliseconds of playback. If data is 1, it returns the current tra track length in seconds. Now, so if I leave it like this, it, it will just tell me where, where the playback is at the moment. But if I say 1, what I should get back is the, uh, the length in, in seconds, right? So how do I get the information out of my script? Well, the uh, what happens is that the send message sends the the, the the message that you're trying to get to that uh, window, and whatever they return, they put it puts it in a um, in a variable called uh, let me see message box error level. So this is one um, standard um, uh, variable that our hotkey uses uh, for different commands. Actually commands like image search and so on they also set the error level the DLL call also sets the error level depending on the error code and so on in this case what happens is that the error level will contain the answer from Winamp um, again if, if the answer is minus one that means that it is not playing or there's an error for example so I do this and I get a positive number yeah, um, I will count it like 4,891,304 seconds. That's what it has. If you take a look at the song, it is around 5 minutes. That should match if you do a little calculation. So, uh, again, you not only can com uh, send messages to it, you can actually receive information back. And this is how you get it, by using the error level variable. Now, before I enter into the last topic...